A blizzard of protests, including from Democratic attorneys general across the U.S. this past weekend, following President Donald Trump's executive order suspending the entire U.S. refugee program for four months and banning the citizens of seven Middle Eastern countries from entering the U.S. for 90 days. WSJ Law Bureau Chief Ashby jo Jones joins us now to unpack the legal aspects of this. Hi, Ashby. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. So we know that President Trump and all presidents have great executive powers, but there are limits to these powers, correct? What are they? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, they have broad, um, broad leeway to issue executive orders that are uh, pursuant to laws that have already been passed. So in other words, a law will be passed, but there's a lot of wiggle room in how that law is going to be um, you know, enforced mm -hmm. um, and executed. And the president has a lot of leeway to do that. So there's all, and especially in, in regard to immigration, mm -hmm. there's a lot of leeway here. However, um, it has to comport, an executive order has to comport with the Constitution, of course, and also with any federal laws that are out there that, um, that it might run up against. So then there are a lot of lawyers and legal scholars who are saying that this travel ban appears to violate the Fifth Amendment. Now, you are also, you're not just an editor here at the Wall Street Journal, you're also a lawyer. So in your legal, you know, view, d does this violate the Fifth Amendment? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't rely on my legal acumen <laughs> for much these days. But um, but I think it's going to be an argument that's worked out in the courts. Uh, the Fifth Amendment, of course, uh, guarantees due process of law to uh, people who are detained or held or arrested, et cetera. Um, and the 14th Amendment also comes into play here. Uh, some of the plaintiffs are making the argument that these folks are being denied equal protection of the law. They're being treated differently than other people in the U.S. Right. So I think both of those are going to come forward. The interesting thing that happened this weekend was we saw a lot of orders come down, um, but none of them really dealt uh, squarely and deeply with these constitutional issues. Everybody said, well, we're going to issue this order for now, but we're going to have to take some time to get briefing, to think about this, to do our research before we really attack these constitutional right. arguments. Now, what about U.S. immigration law? Because in many cases, immigration law is not dealing with U.S. citizens, but rather people who are looking to enter the country. Uh, that's right. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of different immigration, immigration laws, um, and they say a lot of different things. Uh, one thing they generally say is that, um, you know, people, if they're going to be detained for a long period of time, um, they're guaranteed a some sort of hearing or some sort of, you know, um, due process. Uh, and if people as are... As soon as they reach U.S. soil, they are... They are yeah, within, within a reasonable period right. of time. Right. You know, if they're going to be held somewhere and not allowed into the country, mm -hmm. um, they, they're, they, they, they get a hearing. If somebody's claiming asylum, mm -hmm. that they can't go back to their, their country because they will be persecuted or killed or hurt, et cetera, if they go back, those people get a hearing under under our asylum laws. So, are there any laws that say that we cannot discriminate against citizens from certain countries or from certain backgrounds when it comes to who we allow to let in? You know that that's really where the rubber beats the road right. because I think um, President Trump, the State Department, et cetera. You know, there are certain countries that are going to. Um, you know, be on our watch lists, and we're, we, you know, and and we, and we have every right to say, hey, we don't want to allow a flood of people from X, Y, or Z country mm -hmm. to come in. Um, now, whether that violates some tenet of um, freedom of religion or the establishment clause of the First Amendment, which deals with the with um, with religion again, um, mm -hmm. is an open question, I think, and, and and one that courts will probably be taking up in the weeks and months to right. come. Now, it's interesting that U.S. border agents individually have a lot of power at the border, but it is also not absolute. Oh, no, it's it's not absolute. You're exactly right. I mean, they have a, a lot of leeway. I mean, these folks are on the front lines, mm -hmm. and it's a difficult job. Mm -hmm. And um, often it may seem very clear cut. You know, if somebody's got their their paperwork in order, let them go. If they don't, don't let them go. But it's a much more nuanced process than that a lot of the time. What do we know about this person? What have we seen from um, you know, from an, our intelligence uh, agencies, mm -hmm. and the decisions are sort of have to be made on an ad hoc case by case basis. So um, they have constraints from the Constitution and federal law, but they also have a lot of discretion. Now, we know that there have been individual challenges so far to Mr. Trump's ban. Now, these attorney generals have not yet filed lawsuits, as far as we know. How will this change if the states file lawsuits? And could this go all the way to the Supreme Court? 
Um, yeah, the states so far we've seen, I don't know, a number of over, I think around a dozen or more state attorneys general come forward and say, hey, we don't like this um, and sort of put their foot down at this point. Now, whether they're going to sue, whether they're going to band together and sue is an open question. I, I suspect that they might. That's a possibility. And we'll have to see where that goes. I imagine they will be bringing a lot of the same sorts of arguments that the individual detainees and plaintiffs would be making, that this mm. violates the Constitution, yes. um, it violates federal law, et cetera. Um, I think ultimately this could very well go to the Supreme Court to answer part two of your question. Um, we're going to have to see how the courts treat it, though. If all the courts sort of come out and say, you know, yes, this is completely fine, this is totally constitutional, and really we start to get a sense that this isn't that controversial, then the Supreme Court might wait and see. On the other hand, same thing. If, if it appears that the, these guys are really, um, that these cases are, are uh, that, that all the courts are in agreement that this is unconstitutional, then we might not see it reach the Supreme Court. It's when you get a mix of different um, decisions from around the country when the Supreme Court usually steps in and says, hey, we're the ones who have to settle this and, and be, the, uh, be the answer one and for all. All right, we'll see. Ashby Jones, thank you so much for your insight and expertise. You bet. In this.